OK, so we're going to explore this fact that working in degrees, we have the sum tan 59 plus tan 60 plus tan 61 is equal to the product tan 59 multiplied by tan 60 and tan 61. So first we'll verify that this is true, and then we'll look at how we can generalise this and see this as a specific example of a more general trig identity with tan. So to get started, we're actually going to use the angle sum formula for tan, and we're going to think of this as 59 being 60 minus 1, and 61 being 60 plus 1. So this formula, if you have a plus or minus b, for any value, so long as we don't end up with something that's not defined with a zero in the denominator, for example, we can always use this identity. So we can write that tan of 60 plus or minus 1 degree is going to be equivalent to 60 is a and 1 is b, so we've got tan 60 plus or minus tan of 1, and then divided by 1 minus plus tan 60 times tan of 1. But here we know that tan 60 is actually just the square root of 3, this is one of our classic known values. So we can simplify this a little bit, and we'll write this as the square root of 3 plus or minus tan of 1, all divided by 1 minus plus root 3 times tan of 1. So we've got an expression for tan 61 and also for tan 59. So we'll start by adding together tan 59 and tan 61, and then later we'll add tan 60 to this once we're done simplifying this a bit. So if we have tan 59 plus tan 61, just using this identity then, we've got 59 is the one where we've got the minus and then the plus in the denominator. So we've got root 3 minus tan 1 all divided by 1 plus root 3 tan 1. That's our tan 59. And then tan 61 gives us root 3 plus tan 1. And then we get the minus sign in the denominator, 1 minus root 3 tan 1. So to add these two together, we can just multiply the denominators. And we actually get a difference of two squares expression. So we get a reasonably nice denominator to work with now. We're going to have 1 squared, and then root 3 times root 3 times tan 1 times tan 1 gives us 1 minus 3 times tan squared of 1. We'll write well, this is just tan 1 times tan 1. And then in the numerator, we take this root 3 minus tan 1, and then we're going to multiply this from this fraction. We multiply by the other denominator, so by 1 minus root 3 tan 1. And then we've also got this term root 3 plus tan 1, and this is multiplied by the denominator of the first fraction, so multiplied by 1 plus root 3 times tan 1. So now if we expand all of these brackets, we're going to get quite a lot of simplification here. So we get root 3 times 1 just gives us a root 3, and then we've got minus 1 times tan 1, and minus another 3 times tan 1 from the two root 3s being multiplied. So we take away a total of 4 times tan 1, and finally we've also got plus root 3 times tan squared of 1. And then from this bracket we also have plus root 3. We have 1 times tan 1 plus another 3 times tan 1, so we get plus 4 times tan 1. And finally we've also got root 3 times tan 1 all squared, so plus root 3 tan squared of 1. We'll write like this. And you'll see that the 4 tan 1 and the minus 4 tan 1s just cancel with each other, and our denominator is still 1 minus 3 times tan squared 1. So then we can just simplify this a little bit on the numerator now. We can collect together some of our like terms. We've got two root 3s, so we can write 2 root 3, and then we've also got two lots of root 3 times tan squared of 1, and this is still all just being divided by 1 minus 3 times tan squared of 1. So this is our expression now for tan 59 plus tan 61, and next we need to add tan 60, so we'll clear some space, then we effectively just need to add root 3 to this. So now using our previous result for the sum of tan 59 and tan 61, and also using the fact that tan 60 is just root 3, we get this expression for our total sum of all three of them. So now to add them together, we're going to just multiply on the top and bottom of this root 3 by 1 minus 3 tan squared of 1, just so that we've got fractions with the same denominator. So now we're going to get a new fraction expression. We've got 2 root 3 plus another root 3, so we have 3 root 3. And then here we've got 2 root 3 tan squared 1, and here we've got minus 3 times root 3 tan squared 1. So we end up with just minus 1 lot of root 3 tan squared 1. So I write this as minus root 3 
times tan squared of 1, and our denominator is still 1 minus 3 times tan squared of 1. And in the numerator here, we can factor out this factor of the square root of 3, and then we get root 3, 3 minus tan squared of 1, like this. And in the denominator, this 1 minus 3 tan squared 1, we're actually going to split up into a difference of two squares expression to get back to our original forms for tan 59 and tan 61. So we've got 1 minus 3 times tan squared 1, so we can write this as 1 plus root 3 tan 1 times 1 minus root 3 times tan of 1. Then we can do the exact same thing with our 3 minus tan squared 1 term in the numerator. We can split this up into a difference of two squares, and we'll write this as root 3 minus tan 1 multiplied by root 3 plus tan 1. Then our denominator, we've still got these two terms in brackets. We've got the 1 plus root 3 times tan 1. We've also got the 1 minus root 3 times tan of 1. So now if we look back at our expressions for tan 59 and tan 61, you'll see that root 3 minus tan 1 over 1 plus root 3 tan 1, where we've got the negative in the numerator and the positive in the denominator, this is just our original expression for tan 59 using the double angle formula. And here we've got the plus and the minus in the numerator and denominator respectively, which gives us tan 61. And don't forget this factor of root 3 is actually just tan 60. So then this whole expression, our sum of these three terms, is just equal to the product then tan 59 times tan 60 times tan 61, which is exactly what we were trying to show. So now if we want to generalise this result, we could notice that in all of our previous calculations there was nothing particularly important about the number 1, so we could replace that 1 by, let's just say, theta, and all of the previous working would still work, so we could get a more general result there. But we can actually go even more general than this, and we're just going to work with three angles A, B and C, where their sum is 180 degrees, or their sum could be pi radians, if you prefer to work in radians. So if we start with tan of A plus tan B plus tan C, just like before, we're going to rewrite C as 180 degrees minus A plus B. So we can rewrite this sum as tan A plus tan B plus tan of 180 minus, in brackets, A plus B. And now we're going to use some properties of the tan function. So first of all, the tan function is periodic. It repeats every 180 degrees. So if you have tan of 180 plus theta, this is always just going to be equal to tan theta, because the function repeats like this. So we can rewrite this sum then as we've still got tan A plus tan B, but then we can also just have tan of, in brackets, negative A plus B like this, because we've just taken this 180 term. And where we've got the negative here, we can use another identity for the tan function. So if you have tan of negative theta, this is always going to be equivalent to the negative of tan theta. So the negative of tan theta, you can think of this as just taking the minus sign outside of the tan function. So we can rewrite all of this as tan A plus tan B, and then minus tan of A plus B. So now we're going to use the angle sum formula from earlier on tan of A plus B to rewrite this. So we've got still just tan A plus tan of B, and now we've got minus this fraction, tan A plus tan of B, all divided by 1 minus the product tan A times tan B. And then to add these two together, let's re-express this sum here as a fraction with 1 minus tan A tan B as its denominator. So we need to multiply here tan A plus tan B times 1 minus tan A tan B, and then we're also taking away tan A and we're also taking away tan b. So you can think of this as really being taking away tan a plus tan b in brackets to explain where that extra minus sign comes from. We've also got in the denominator it's still 1 minus tan a tan b. So now if we expand the brackets on top here, first of all multiplying by the 1 we get a tan a plus a tan b, which we'll be able to cancel in a moment. And we've also got tan a times tan a times tan b, and the negative there, so it's minus tan squared a times tan of b, 
B, and then we've also got similarly tan B times negative tan A times tan B, so take away tan A times tan squared B, and then we take away tan A and we take away tan B. So those terms cancel with our tan A and tan B at the start, and our denominator is still just this 1 minus tan A times tan B. So we can now start to simplify this by factorising. So we can take out a factor of tan A and tan B in the numerator, which is common to them all. So we've got tan A times tan B, and then our fraction is going to be, I'll write this all in brackets, it's the negative of tan A plus tan B, and this is all divided by 1 minus tan A times tan B. So now we can rewrite all of this fraction now as it's just the negative of, going back to our angle sum formula, it's just the negative of tan of A plus B. So we can rewrite all of this as tan A times tan B times the negative of tan of A plus B like this. But then we can rewrite the negative of tan of A plus B using this identity, take the minus sign back inside our tan function effectively. So we've got tan A times tan B, and this should really be in brackets with the minus sign, and this is multiplied by tan of just the negative of A plus B in brackets like this. So take the minus sign inside the tan function. But then we can also use our other tan identity where we can just add 180 inside the function. This won't change anything because it's 180 degrees periodic. So we can add in 180 degrees here, and now you can see we've got 180 minus A plus B, which is exactly the value C, because A, B and C sum to 180 degrees. So then we can conclude that this is equal to tan A times tan B times tan C as required. And this will work for all values of A, B and C, so long as the sum is 180, and so long as we're using values of A, B and C where our tan function is well defined, and we don't end up dividing by zero. So I think this is really amazing. I'd never seen this identity before. I think it's particularly cool that you could just have A, B and C because they sum to 180 degrees. These could be any angles in a triangle. So I think it's really crazy that the sum of the tan of three angles in a triangle is the same as the product of the tan of three angles in a triangle. So I wonder if there's some interesting geometric interpretation to understand exactly why this result is true for angles in a triangle.